Okay, um, I'm looking at NetBeans, and today I'm going to do the very, very first GUI, Graphical User Interface, in Java. NetBeans is a program which allows you to draw on the screen. Well, one of the things it allows you to do is draw on the screen and design swing forms for Java, and we're going to be doing that. The challenge that we're going to be working through is taking the average of two numbers, which is Java step number two. Asking for two numbers, printing the average on the screen. We should have already done this in Eclipse and text, um, in procedural programming and text, and seen the answer printed out in the screen in the console at the bottom. Now we're just going to see what it looks like in a GUI. So I'm going to load up NetBeans to begin with. The first time you go in, you'll see this unless you've ticked the untick the show on startup. It's a welcome screen or a start page. So just close that. And you probably won't have any projects here. But either way, you need to make a new project and choose the default, which is a Java application. Um, give it a name. I'm going to call this one Average. Um, I'm going to untick Create Main Class because I don't need a main class for this. And let it create my folder structure and my project for me. You can see inside here, in the project, which is called average, inside the source folder, I have nothing. I just have a default package. If you forgot to untick the create main class, you'll see a Java class in there. You need to delete that, or else whenever you try to run your form, um, it'll run the empty Java class instead. So I'm going to right click and say new JFrame form and give it a name. I'm going to call this one average of two numbers. And when that appears, you'll see on the right hand side, I have some tools that I can drop on and the properties of those tools. And on the left, I have the navigator, the object navigator, which at the minute I have nothing inside my frame, but as I start to add things, they'll appear here as well. Um, I'm going to put in two labels. And beside those two labels, I'm going to locate two text fields. It's going to go right there. You'll see that as I move things around, um, NetBeans suggests when things are lined up with those little lines that appear. This is saying it's absolutely perfect. Um, this is lined up with these three items, so it's got three lines, so I'm just going to release that. And I'm also going to need somewhere to uh, print out the answer. So I'm going to put another text field there in the bottom where the answer gets printed out. So let's see if it suggests where probably about here. And finally, um, I'm going to have a button. Jeez, I'm going to take one of these and OK button. It's got OK in the text of it. And I'm going to line that up. So the idea is this one is just a normal label. It's going to say number one. Or first, yeah, number one. And I'm going to double click on this one and change its text to number two. And I can even take that and I think I can copy there. I'll duplicate it and I'll uh, move that down to here. Line that up a little bit with these and I'll put uh, answer. And what I'll do with this final text field is I'll, I'll make it uneditable. I'll take away its, uh, its editable property so that the user can't actually write in it. And I might actually change the background color of it as well so it doesn't look editable like that. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to resize some of these. And even more importantly, I'm going to give them proper names because as you can see in the background, NetBeans will create some Java code. At the minute, it's created quite a small Java class, which um, we can run. And what it does is it creates each of these components. Um, if you notice, in, there is some generated code here which we can't touch because this has been generated by, by NetBeans. And depending on where we locate all of our controls, um, this code changes. So it doesn't, NetBeans will not allow me to edit this code. It will allow me to look at it, but not edit it. Um, so just be aware of that. Okay, I'm going to pop back to design again. 
Um, and what I was trying to, I was going to explain is that the names of these controls by default aren't really very meaningful. And as I'm going to be using these in my program later on, what I'm going to do is change them here so that they change in the automatically generated code so that I can use them and I know what I'm doing. So for example here, text field, I'm going to change its variable name to uh, first, first number. And the next one I'm going to change its variable name to second number. And the text field where I'm going to put the answer, just line a little bit better, um, I'm going to call it answer. Now, while I'm on the subject, there is a there is a, a standard way of naming these, of adding, before the name of the variable, adding a three-letter indication of what type of control it is. So txt for a text field, lbl for a label, btn for a button, but I'm not going to do that right now. We'll bring that in a little bit later on. Um, so I'm just going to call this one answer for now. And the button, I'm going to change its variable name to uh, OK. I'm also going to change the text of that button to OK. And I'm going to change the text of the text field 1 to be, oops, to be completely empty. So I'll go to its, I'll select it and go to its uh, text property and change it to be nothing. Now you'll see that automatically this resizes the text field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to force it to be a little bit bigger by changing its columns property to about 10. So it has space for about 10 numbers in it. Same with this. I'm going to edit its text to nothing. And I'm going to change its column size to about 10. And also, I think I'll do the same with the field where I'm going to put the answer. I'm going to change its column size to a little bit bigger, maybe about, about 20. And I'm going to change its current text to be nothing. Now, note I could have done that two ways. Um, everything is available in the properties window here, but you're given a couple of little shortcuts on the context menu here. So if I run my form now, nothing is going to happen. It will appear, and I'll get my two number fields. I'll be able to type into those numbers, and I'll see where the answer is going to appear. But Oops, uh, put some numbers in there, click on OK, nothing happens. But I can see that this field here isn't editable, I can't type anything in there. I'll stop that. OK, so I need some code which calculates the average. And if I want to add code behind something, I can either double click on, uh, on an item, and it'll take me to the default, um, the default action for it, which in this case is action performed. Um, or... I can go back to design, I can right click on it, and I can go to events, and then choose which of the actions I want to do. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to go for the default thing, which is when it's clicked, and it's called action performed for a button, and I'm going to put my code in here. So here we go. I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to get a number from the first text field and a number from the second text field. I'm going to add them together, and then I'm going to divide them by two. I'm going to add my answer to the third text field. So here we have a first, well, let's make a variable, int number one equals first number dot get text. There we go. So far so good. Um, but I think I'll make that a float so it's a little bit more accurate. And I can see we have an error there, which I know what it is, but I'm going to come back to that in a second. My float number two equals second number dot get text. The get text method just simply gets the text that is inside that field. Now, get text returns a string because they can type anything in a text field and I need this to be a float. So I need to do a conversion somewhere along here. And what I'm going to do is because this is a float, I'm going to take advantage of the float class I'm going to say float dot parse float, which accepts a string, and I'm going to wrap that around the first number dot get text. 
exactly the same thing with the second one because it's a float as well. And finally, I'm going to I'm going to define a variable called sum. Well, straight away, average, which is equal to number one plus number two. And the answer of that sum, I'm going to divide it by two. So far, so good. And finally, I have to put that answer, that average, inside the third text field, which is the answer field. So I'm going to say answer dot set text. Now you can see that I need that float converted into text to put it inside here. So this time I'm going to take advantage. Well, I could I could I could float I could do the float class to string, but I'm going to use a str the string class dot value of, which converts whatever you pass into it. These are the possibilities um, into a string. And I'm just going to pass in my number. So it will convert this into a string, and then it will store this string it's converted into set text of answer. So here we go, let's run it. And when my box comes up, when my form comes up, I can type in a number here, another number here. OK, and there's my average. Check that again, try a different number, simpler one. There we go. Now, there's still some problems with this code. It's not perfect. Um, for example, if I type in something which is not translatable into a number, that's going to cause a problem. If I click on OK, nothing happens on my form, but I can see down in the bottom in the background that it has given me an error. It has raised an exception which I have not handled. So I'm going to explain briefly what that is. Um, this is a number format exception, which has been thrown, which is what it's called in Java, by the class, um, originally by the class uh, float, and the, 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 um, <clears throat> the, the method of the class was parse float. So if I go and look at that, it was behind the OK button, it was right here when I tried to change the first number into text. So what I need to do is I need to somehow handle that exception so that it doesn't do that on the screen and it, it, it does something. So I'm going to do a try before it. And I'm first of all going to do a catch very, very end. I'm going to catch um, any exception which happens in that block. And if anything happens at all, I'm going to print out a message. I'm going to um, let's see, I'm going to I'm going to show a message which is going to pop up in front of the current window. Yeah, which pops up in front of the current window, and um, and gives the user um, an error message, allowing him to change what he's done. Just check that that's the correct spelling. Dot show. Let's see, I've got a confirm dialog. Dialog. There we go. Show message dialog. Excellent. Okay, so the first argument it takes is this current form, which is front of. Um, then I'm going to give the message, which is going to be, please check the numbers you typed. And then I'm going to say the title across the top of the window was, I'm going to say an error has occurred. I'm just going to put error. Make it a little bit easier. And finally, um, I can specify what type of icon gets printed in that box. So I need a constant for that. So I'm going to use the J option pane class again. And um, 
I can choose whether it's going to be an error message, which would have an exclamation mark, information um, option, which gives me a couple of different buttons, um, or a plain message. And I'm going to say error message at the minute. Semicolon at the end, and that, no matter what happens, um, that will give me an error message. If any error occurs between the try and the catch, it will print that out. So I've got an exception. I've got a I've got a compilation error at the minute. Let's have a quick look and see what it is. I'm gonna find the symbol first number. Um, all right. So first number in this case, which of two numbers? Interesting. Why is it done that? If I take away the try, we've got it again. Makes no difference at all. It's almost as if that had disappeared. Is that still called first number? Is there a problem? Yes, it is. Um, have I made a mistake with the amount of curly braces? Doesn't look like it. Have I got any parenthesis errors? Doesn't look like it either. But it can't find the symbol first number, which I know is a text field. Interesting, this looks like I have made a mistake in the structure somewhere before it. Let's space this out a little bit. Um, all right, let's get rid of one of these. Ah, there we go. So it's a, it's an error that I had with the incorrect number of curly braces. Fine, let's run that. Um, I think I still have it running. So let's close that down, the previous one. Let's run it now. Okay, so let's check it still works. I'm going to put down 4 and 10. The average is 7. And now I'm going to make an error in there. And it tells me, please check the numbers you typed. Okay, good. Now, a lot of other things I could do as well. I could automatically return focus to the, to the field that was wrong um, and delete what was there before. But... To do that, I would have to know which of those fields was wrong. Um, so inside my code, if I were to do that, um, I would have to have two different try catches, one around each one of these, one around this first line. Uh, and if the result of that would be to return focus back to this box and ask him to change it. And then I would have to have a try catch around this one, which would be very similar, but the result of that would be re to return focus and put the mouse back, put the cursor back into the second box and ask him to change that one. So for now, I'm just going to leave it there. Um, the two things that we've done so far, this little mini lesson, have been, first of all, how to design a screen, how to add in components onto a J form, and a J frame form, sorry, and how to rename those components, or rename the variables that those components refer to, and then afterwards, how to edit some of the properties of those different components so that they they look nicer, more aligned in the screen. And finally, um, in our source, when we attach some code to the OK button, we learned how to start off a block with try and then finish it by catching exception. And then inside the catch, which begins here and ends here, handling it so that if any error occurs, the program jumps from that line directly to this block here and then continues the program afterwards. Skipping, obviously skipping the calculation of the numbers. Um, okay, this is enough to, the final, just one, one last thing I'd like to leave with is that exception is, uh, is a class which is extended or inherited from by many other types of exception class. So you can be very, very specific and you can trap different types of errors and do different things depending on what that error is. And if you remember, the error that this threw before was a number format exception. So I can, uh, I can then react and do different things depending on what the error is, but that will come later on. And for now, it's good enough just to trap any type of error because it's a very simple piece of code. Okay. I hope that's been useful. And, uh, And yes, and go and try it yourself.